Hello, this is Candace from The Hot Bohemian, and today I am going to be making some cuff bracelets with some teardrop turquoise gemstones. So these are the three stones that I picked. I thought those would look pretty, you know, as, as some cuff bracelets. So these are gonna be set in sterling silver and what I'm going to do is just go through the process step by step on how to make a cuff bracelet using any cabochon that you like but I'm going to work with these turquoise pieces okay so the first step is we need to make a bezel and I have a bunch of different sizes of um, bezel wire so I'm going to pull those out and then we're going to determine which size fits which stone. So as you can see here I have six different types of bezel wire and ultimately what we need to do is pick out the bezel wire design that I would like or and the height. So I'm going to be working with um, what is fine silver. So this bends easier than you know if it's sterling um, which what is what you want when you're making a bezel so this one right here is a scalloped edge I also have the serrated edge so this has like um, almost like a sharp teeth like edge here and then I have a regular flat bezel layer so um, the two things that you have to consider is what design do you want and the height. So when you're making a bezel, you want to make sure that, that the top of the bezel wire doesn't go too far over your stone. Um, and it's okay if it does because you can always sand the bottom of the bezel wire down if it is. So what I'm going to do is pick out um, my bezel wire and then I will show you how to form it around the cabochon. So I've decided to make one of each design for my three cabochons here. So this first stone I'm going to do with the serrated bezel edge. The middle one I'm going to do scalloped and the last is just going to be the plain straight across bezel. So the first thing we're going to do is, I'm going to move these out, you're going to take your bezel wire and you're just going to wrap it around your stone and try to get it as tight as possible. So I'm going to start, you usually want to start on the side, you don't ever want to start like on a corner or um, an end. I'm just going to wrap my stone and this is the way you know I I've done it um, and this bezel wire is very soft so I have it wrapped in the shape that I that I would like and so what I'm gonna do is just make a mark and then I'm gonna cut it. And then I'm gonna do that for all three of these. So I have each of my bezel wires cut out around the shape of my stones. Now these are not perfect, um, but what we're gonna do is kind of mold it more to the shape of the stone and then trim down any extra here on the side. So I use usually a pair of cutters and a needle file and then to get my exact shape so this is the serrated bezel and I'm just gonna kind of push on the sides another way to make sure that it's nice and snug is kind of looking at the back making sure there's no gaps so I'm gonna cut off a little extra on this and don't cut too far because sometimes I've done that and then it's too small and you got to start it all over again so I think I'm gonna make 
make a mark here. And then I'm gonna cut. And I always save my scraps um, because you can melt them down for the um, like sterling silver accents, which are like the little balls. Um, so I, I save my scrap metal. And then so I had cut this. Let's see how the fit is now. Perfect. So now what I'm going to do is just file up the edges here and then see how it fits on my capuchon. So once this is soldered, it's going to have a more tight fit, but essentially we want it looking something like this. So I'm going to go ahead and do that for these other two. The next step in this process is to solder our bezel wire. And so you want to make sure the joint is flush and then we are going to solder using this handy flux. So what you want to do is paint the spot on here where the joint the joints connect. Well on the front little on the back. I am using um, medium solder. So you just want to clip a little piece off. And little, I mean very, very tiny. So, and then what I do is put a little flux on that also. And with my solder pick, I'm going to pick that up. And put it right on the on the joint. And then for this, um, it's not a big solder uh, piece right here, so I'm going to use my micro torch. I'm going to heat it up. This goes pretty quick. Um, and sometimes the piece of solder is going to jump, so you want to make sure you're there with your pick to move it if it does. Okay, so that load. Sometimes if it gets st stuck to your your block, you can just put a little bit of a uh, water on it and it should it should get it uh, to come up. And so you're going to quench it and then I'm going to move on to the next couple um, bezel wires and solder them up. So all of my bezel wires are soldered and fit around the stones perfectly. And these first two actually look really nice. This last one, if you can see, it's kind of sitting there in there a little low. And so what I'm going to do to fix this is get out some 200 to 400 grit sandpaper. And then I'm just going to um, sand it down in, in circles along the sandpaper. So I will show you what that looks like. So I have a 220 grit sandpaper, and what I'm gonna do is just take my bezel, and I'm gonna put it on my finger, and I'm just gonna kinda go in circles and figure eights um, to just sand the edge of this off, and then I'm gonna keep putting the stone back in it to see, make sure it's the right setting. So this is a longer process, but this is what you can do when your bezel is too high for your stone. Okay, very tragic. While I was trying to reset my stone and the bezel, it cracked. So you run across problems like this sometimes, unfortunately, because I loved this stone. So 
I'm going to replace it with this turquoise piece right here. So I'm gonna um, see if this bezel is gonna fit this, maybe kind of rework it. I might need to cut it and resolder it. But unfortunately, things like that happen and you just gotta pick a new stone and move on. So unfortunately, things like that happen. I was able to get a new piece of turquoise and use the same bezel as the other cracked stone. And I am really glad that it happened before I did any soldering onto a back plate. Um, so I'm gonna be working with this stone now. So the next thing that you want to do is we need to find our back plate. So I use, I have two different types of metals here, but I'm gonna use, I believe, this is, um, I think this is eight, 20 gauge, and this one is 18, but I'm gonna be using the 20 gauge. So side by side comparison, this one is thicker, but um, this one's easier to cut, easier to work with, and when you're um, filing down the edges, it's it goes a little quicker with this. So I'm gonna set this here, <clears throat> excuse me, on my, on my um, metal block, and I'm going to kind of place the stones around this metal and try to use as much of the metal as I can, and then I'm going to trace them. And then ultimately, I'm going to use my jeweler saw and cut out pieces. So while I get this figured out, I'm going to use a Sharpie, trace, and then cut these guys out. All right, so I decided to go with three, these three spots. I'm now going to use Burr Life my jeweler saw and cut out each of those um, spaces for my for my um, cabochons. So at this point I had cut out all three of the back plates and I know they're a little funky looking but we're gonna trim all that extra stuff off. Um, so at this point you want to make sure you have a secure and exact fit for your cabochons. So what I like to do is um, take my piece and put it on the back plate and then make sure that it fits going down um, because once we solder this that's the only way that you're going to be able to set the stone is by taking the stone and putting it down into the bezel so you just want to make sure it's not too tight that it's going to be able to click into place like that so you want to make sure um, you know, you do that for all the stones if you're working with multiple pieces like I am. This is also a good time to stamp something on the back, such as, uh, you know, the .925 stamp, or sometimes I stamp with decorative pieces like peace signs. Um, I have leaves and arrows and feathers that I do, but I think today I'm just going to be stamping the, the sterling silver 925 on the backs of these and I will show you guys how to do how I do that here in a second. So I'm going to make sure these all fit and then we'll do the stamping. So I marked where I would like to stamp the .925 and this is in press art and what I'm going to do is line it up with my marks and mark it in some sharpie and then I'm going to just hit it a couple times. And then you have your .925 and I know it's all scratched up but this will be cleaned up later. Okay, now for this part. You want to make sure everything is fluxed up. So I'm going to flux the back plate. The entire inside of the bezel and then if you can see here I have about 10 pieces of medium solder that I've already fluxed and so now your 
comes the part where we line, make sure this looks, make sure it's all on the um, back plate and that no sides are going over the, the back plate because you want to make sure it's all going to be surrounded by metal. Now, you want to take all your pieces of flux and then um, put them in here and just push them up against the side wall of the bezel. So I have about 10 pieces here that I'm gonna go ahead and push all along the sides of the bezel wall. So this really is a more tedious part of the process because things wanna move when you're trying to place all the pieces of solder in here, but it looks like I've got all my solder where it needs to be. And now for this part, we are going to solder and I'm gonna be using my giant benzomatic porch. This is propane. I stole this from my husband. Easier than using oxyacetylene. And now for this part, you want to make sure you wear a respirator if you don't have any sort of ventilation. I have my um, 3M uh, extra small because I have a very small head and safety goggles. So this part can take anywhere from, you know, 30 seconds to a minute. So what I'm going to do is just heat the piece up with my torch and then I'm going to keep moving the flame along the piece until I see a flash, which essentially means the solder has uh, flowed. So here we go. <laughs> may jump so you want to make sure you have your pick to get in there and fix those pieces that is just something that happens when the when the flux heats up okay <laughs> So all three of my bezels have been soldered onto the back plate. You can see the stampings on the back. And so what we can do to remove this extra sterling, one or two, one of two ways. You can use a, um, a jeweler saw and like sometimes I'll draw lines on where I want to cut around or I just got these shears which can cut up to, I believe, 20 gauge, which is this. And you can just go ahead and trim, cuts actually really easy. So this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna use the shears and I'm gonna trim around all of these pieces and then save my scraps for when I want them melt them down. So I'm going to go ahead and do this first one and just kind of get as close as I can because it takes away some extra steps, some, some more work. Uh, okay. So I kind of want it to look like this, kind of the shape of what it's going to look like. And once I get all three of those done, we're going to move on to the next step. So I have these trimmed up as close to the bezel as I want to get them. I know some people like to leave a little lip on their bezels. I like mine to be smooth, kind of like my rings here. There's no, um, you know, overhang. And so the next part is the most tedious, in my opinion. So I'm going to use my my Dremel flex shaft to first grind down with a um, like a coarse sanding bit 
So that's the first step. So essentially I'm gonna take it along the edges here and just grind off the extra. And then the second part is once I get it to almost being flush, I'm gonna take a, this is a um, silicone polishing wheel in I think a medium grit. And then I'm also gonna do the same thing and this gives it a more high polish and smooth look. A lot of people um, use hand saws and hand file. You can do that. Um, so like for instance, you know, this is my needle, needle file. Just take it and just go along the edge until all of that extra is filed off. But I think it's easier just to use this grinding bit. And I got these on Rio, pretty inexpensive. Um, and so for this part, you want to use some kind of protectant for your fingers because the metal, if you're using a flex shaft or a Dremel, the metal gets so hot where I have learned from my mistakes, I burned my fingers. So I usually put these on um, the thumb pointer in middle finger and then I, I first need to put this bit into the, the Dremel. So um, I will begin that process here in a second. So for this part, you want to be wearing safety glasses, a respirator, and something to protect your fingers because like I said, when you're holding the metal and you're grinding away with um, you know, whatever bit you have, um, the metal gets super hot. So you don't wanna burn yourself. And so I, um, you can use a respirator or one of those dust masks. I've learned the hard way having pieces of silver smack into my face. So I'm gonna put on my respirator. You probably won't be able to hear me very well, but then I'm gonna go ahead and just start grinding away at one of these um, just to kind of show you the technique I use. So all of these have been polished using the silicone medium grit wheel. And as you can see, um, high finish, it's kind of blends in all together, which is the look I'm going for. And I made sure to hit the, um, the um, solder line to make sure it looks nice and smooth. These are, you know, going to be filed and sanded, not filed, but um, sanded down a little bit more and polished up towards the end. So they'll, they'll get another um, quick coat. And so the backs are also going to be sanded down to make it look nice and smooth. So the next part is the fun part. We are going to make the bangles or the cuffs that go um, along with this. So I would not recommend putting your stones in these pieces unless you use a piece of dental floss. Cause um, I know it's happened before that you put it in 
and then the stone gets stuck in there. So um, you don't want to do that just yet. You can kind of maybe like set it down, something like that, where you can easily pull it out. But don't put these in because you don't want it to get um, stuck. So what I'm going to do is get out my wire and show you how I cut and make each of the bangles. So I'm going to be working with this half round wire sterling silver eight gauge purchased from Rio Grande. Item numbers up there if this is something that you're interested in buying. So I like this wire because it's a little thicker and I feel like, you know, it looks good as a thin cuff bracelet. And it's stronger, you know, it's not going to get all bent out of shape because it's a higher gauge. So I cut this to about five and a half inches because it's going to have around an inch opening and it's going to be, you know, slightly adjustable for, for the, um, the customer. And so I'm just going to bend the wire straight. I'm actually going to make this five and a half. So go to five and a half and I'll make a mark. And then I'm going to repeat this step three times since I am making three cups today. So I cut my wire and I actually cut um, them all three different lengths. So I have a five and a half, a five and a quarter, and a five inch um, strip of, of wire just to vary the sizes because I know when I do sell my pieces a lot of people say that they're either too big or too small. So just to give a variety of lengths here. The next thing you want to do with these is file down the, the ends that were cut. And then from there, I'm going to use a planishing hammer to hammer out the ends of these so they're not just a blunt, sharp end. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just take um, my files and go around and just kind of make get rid of that, that um, end right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that on all of these now. So now I have all the ends kind of filed to a nice um, 90 degree angle. So they're all filed out. So from here, I like to make the ends almost like a paddle shape. And to do that, I use this planishing hammer by Fretz. Um, this was again purchased at Rio Grande. And what I do is I set my metal on my steel block and with um, you know one of the sides of the planishing hammer I just kind of tap it out and so you can see now it is kind of becoming flat just like a tiny bit so I'm going to keep doing this until it's at the desired the desired effect that I want So as you can see, it is slowly starting to move the metal and there are a little bit of divots in there, but we can smooth those out. So compared to, you know, an end that is not finished, that's what it's going to look like. So essentially I'm going to go through on all of these and kind of make a paddle um, on the ends. So I flattened out all, all the edges. And then I went ahead and took my um, 
silicone wheel and just kind of polish these up a little bit. So the ends look a little bit more finished off than just that hard edge. And then now would be a good time if you wanted to apply any decorations on here, such as any stampings, hammerings, um, do that now before we bend it. And so I'm going to do a couple different designs just so I have a variety and they're not just plain Jane. So one of these I'm going to use a peen hammer, the end of it here to just hammer and give it that kind of shiny look. Um, another one of these, I think I might make a design and use some of my um, punch tools to create that. Uh, and maybe I'll even do a design with the third. So I'm going to go ahead and design these and then show you how exactly I go about doing that. Okay, so for the design, what I did for this first piece is I did a hammer texture and I picked out what stone I was gonna have be on this one too. So if you can see, it's kind of reflects the light and it's got a nice hammered finish. And so I chose this turquoise piece to fit onto this one. Next, I kind of freehanded these, or I, I did. I picked out the stone first, found the center of the piece, and then just freehand a design on here. And then this next one is a little simpler of a design. And that's the stone that's going to go onto there. So what I'm going to do now is get out my chasing tools. I have different thicknesses, but I got these on, I believe, Etsy. And so they're just like tiny little tools that have um, like a notch. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a hammer and carefully place it where I want it to go and then hammer, etch in these designs. And then from there, once we're totally finished with everything, I can use a blackener and then the designs will stand out. So I'm going to get my tools ready um, and then I'm going to go ahead and start to etch these away. So I just stamped all the designs in these pieces and if you look close I, had, I got rid of the sharpie marks so my designs are stamped in. Again that was using a hammer and my these uh, chasing tools that look like this. So I know they're light now, but once we put the blackener in them, they're really gonna pop. So the next step in our bracelet making adventure is to get the shape of the bracelet. So we wanna shape it into a cuff, and then we're gonna solder our bezel cups here that we made onto the bracelet. And then we are going to set our stone. So what I did for these two is I found the center. I'm going to find the center of this one before I um, bend it. So I'm going to do that and then we're going to bend them on our bracelet mandrel. So I'm going to be using the Fretz Maker Edition wooden bracelet mandrel. And so what I'll, I'll do is I'm going to take my first cuff and line up where I said the center of my cuff is and just kind of bend it over the side of the mandrel. I like the oval shape because it gives you a more true fit on a wrist because right wrists aren't round we have more of an oval shape and so after I'm done bending so the best you can use a hammer on this too um, so it's gonna look something like this and then I'm going to take my bending players and then kind of shape it more into a cuff so that might take me even bending it a little bit um, and these, this tool right here is what I use when I hand stamp cuffs. 
Okay, so that's more of the, the shape that I'm looking for, right? And so if, whenever someone purchases this, they can, they can do the bending on their own to have it fit their individual wrist. So I'm gonna repeat that with these other two pieces. And then we're gonna get ready to um, solder the bezel cups on. So I'm all set up here to solder my first bracelet. Um, this part usually takes the most, is kind of getting a configuration to how the bracelet's going to stand up straight and not be crooked. So here I just used two um, titanium set of pliers. So I have my, I flexed my, um, both the bracelet and the bezel. I have my solder in there. So I'm gonna go ahead and use my um, benzomatic torch until the solder flows and then I'm gonna quench, then pickle this piece. So we're gonna go, I'm gonna go ahead and So the solder did flow, so I'm going to carefully, because sometimes these get hot, lift those. I like to quench these. I'm going to pick this guy up, quench him first. So this is actually what it looks like right when I'm done quenching. So I set it pretty even. I'm happy with the set. Um, so obviously there's some fire skill on there. So if I pickle this for, I don't know, five minutes or so, not even, um, all that fire skill is going to come off. So I'm excited for this first bangle. And then what I'm going to do is finish the other two bangles right now. So we are almost complete making these bracelets. So here are what the bracelets look like after they have been soldered and pickled. So they're definitely more of a milky whitish color. And once we polish these up, that'll change. Um, I'm happy with the way these came out. Now what I'm going to do is darken in these impressions I made and then I'm also gonna darken in the hammer texture. So what I have set up here is um, you want to wear a pair of gloves for this process because we're gonna be using chemicals that physically change the metal. And so I have just a plastic, one of those to-go container lids I'm gonna be using to paint um, the silver black and around. And then I have a dish of baking soda and water. So once I'm done painting these on, I kinda of wanna neutralize the acid by throwing it in the baking soda. So again, this is from Rio Grande. This is Jack's Silver Blackener. And what I'm gonna do is just open this up and I have a regular paintbrush here that I'm going to dip into the solution and just ever so slightly paint over all of my marks. And you can see immediately, I mean, it's turning black. And so that's what we want because we'll be able to polish it right off and it should stay in the grooves. So I'm gonna do one side, do the other, till it's all black. Sometimes I like to go on the back and then hit that 925 so it, so it stands out too. So we have, it's all black. I'm gonna dump it in the solution. It should bubble up a little bit. And then I'm gonna continue with the rest of these. So I'm just, like I said, ever so slightly just painting this stuff on and you definitely want to be wearing gloves because you do not want this on your hands. And I'm going to be painting all three of these. It actually changes pretty quick. And I've learned the hard way that if you put this back into the pickle, all the jacks, the, this um, blackener will come off. So if you don't like something and you want it off in its entirety, throw it back in the pickle. All right, these are looking good. And then you also, once we're done with these, want to throw your paintbrush into the 
to the solution of baking soda and water. Okay, so these are all in there. Let them sit, get them out, dry them, and then we will polish them up. So the pieces are cleaned up. I just rinsed them off with some water. And now we are one step closer to my favorite part, which is setting the stone. So I want to go ahead and clean these up, make them not so dark. So what I use, I just find this the easiest, you can use it with your hands, is the cleaning pro polish pads. Get these from Rio Grande, you get 50 of them, which this has lasted me a very long time. So I just take this and my piece of metal and work it. You can kind of see it already shining up a bit compared to this side. So what I'll do is I'll go through, and this is kind of the final step too that I use on all my pieces is I use this, these pro polishing cloths. So if you can see the difference between the sides, this is still the black and this is turning a nice shiny silver finish. So I'm gonna go ahead and polish these all up and then we'll get ready to set these stones. Okay, time for the best part, which is setting the stones. So I have polished my bangles up. And what I didn't show you in, in the video is me re-polishing these with my silicone wheel. So I went back over each of these bezels just to kind of make them look pretty. And then the insides, drag it through here just in case there were any scratches or whatnot. So here's what they look like. I think the etchings came out great and also the hammering texture. So I'm gonna match the stones up with the bracelets. So we have this one goes here. This bracelet has this stone and this bracelet has this stone. So the tools we're gonna need, super simple, a burnisher and a bezel rocker. So I use both of these when I am setting a stone. So I'm gonna show you this in its entirety because they are different bezels. The first one's the scalloped edge. This one is the easiest, I think. And so go ahead and set your stone in, you know, make sure it's good and fits perfectly. Sometimes I'll take one of my dapping tools and just run it through the inside to make, push the bezel wall out a little, out a little bit so the stone sits a little nicer. Okay, so I'm pushing the stone in. So that's, that stone is set in there. So I like to use the bezel rocker first and I'll start on one side and just push in the scalloped edges. And then I just go all the way around. I'll do, I'll start on one side and then go to the next. I think the trickiest part are usually if you have corners um, or points. And so, I'm gonna continue just pushing each of these little pieces down. Now this is just gonna set the stone in there so it doesn't fall out. And this is probably just gonna fold over that. That corner piece is gonna fold over. You also want to be careful you don't nick your stones. I've had that happen to me before. Those are pieces I usually just keep for myself when that happens. Okay, so there we go. That piece is set in there. Um, I'm going to come back over it with the burnisher once I'm done, but I wanted to set all of these stones to show you the each, each of the bezels. So this is my serrated bezel. And I'm gonna carefully set the stone in here. I'm actually gonna make it a little bigger. This kind of just again pushes out the bezel wall so the stone will sit in there more comfortably so you're not trying to 
jam it in there and maybe put any cracks or whatnot. So. Okay. So I have him in there. And now I'm going to do the same as before with the bezel rocker. I'm just going to start on one side and push in. Oh, Got to be careful there. <laughs> it's my worst fear. And then go to the other side. You do have to put a little bit of force on here because it was hardened. The, the bezel was hardened so it's a little bit trickier to push down. And so just kind of working my way around. Um, I, I feel the, um, I like the serrated edge bezel. I feel like this is an easy one to set. And the scalloped is easy to set too. So this part right here using the bezel rocker, I'm just, again, pushing it down to keep the stone in. And then we can get to that part. It'll look something like that. Um, we will go over it here with the burnisher in a second. So last stone, we'll see how this one slides in there. Okay, another good fit. Same thing, go around. I feel like with the straight across bezel, you need to work it a little better to make it look pretty. The other ones you just kind of bend it down and smooth it out. This one is a lot more smoothing. Um, it takes a little bit more time. I do like the look of this one too. It is the more complex one. So as, as I continue, you can see there's it's starting to come on in together. Keep telling myself not to scratch the stone. All that hard work. And contrary to how long this video is, you know, which is probably long in itself, um, this has taken me at least five hours to create three bracelets for this video. So it's still a little wavy. We will fix that. And how we do that is taking the burnisher and just almost like you're um, peeling a vegetable or something. You just kind of rub it along the edges as hard as you can. And that's going to give you a secure fit and kind of make the bezel a little shiny and lay down. So I'm going to do that for all these and then show you the final product. Here's the final product of the bracelets that I made today. So you can see the hand stamping designs came out pretty nice. Um, that's what they look like on the back side with the paddle edges. So these are a little big for me, but um, I'm super excited about how they turned out and I hope this helped to make these bracelets.